Founded in 2009, University of Dayton Publishing is the result of an alliance between SMA, a leading content publisher, and the University of Dayton, a top-tier Catholic research university. Our mission is to expand the horizons and opportunities available to students by integrating the best in English language teaching and learning with universal values, social responsibility, and an awareness of global issues. In University of Dayton Publishing, we are closely affiliated with the University of Dayton. Founded in 1850, the university prepares students and teachers for both life and work, promoting the values of strong communities and leadership through service to others. Following the university's example and academic principles, we produce materials that both improve the teaching of English and aid the development of personal attributes that will help learners in the future. University of Dayton Publishing offers the best innovative resources in teaching and learning English as a foreign language. It integrates consulting services, modern teacher training, print materials, and digital resources to form a unique catalog of products and services that are designed to meet the needs of both teachers and learners. In our dual roles as publisher and educational consultant, we deliver tailor-made solutions to help schools evaluate new materials, improve their curriculum design, and integrate the latest developments and technologies into teaching and learning. In University of Dayton Publishing, we create innovative English language teaching, content language integrated learning, teachers' resources, language arts publications, interactive digital books, and virtual learning environments. University of Dayton Publishing, improving English, developing people. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our new webinar held by SM Dayton. I see that there are a lot of people from different parts of Chile and from other parts in Latin America, from Colombia, Argentina, uh, from the north of Chile, from the very south of Chile, from Punta Arenas. So hello, everyone, and welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we would like to thank SM Dayton for this free of charge webinar. And SM Dayton has a vast experience as a publisher in the educational field. Our drive is to make learning accessible for everyone. And being here today is proof of our vocation towards accessible learning. Now, if you would like to take a look at our top-notch course books, please contact your local representative, and I'm sure they'll be more than glad to help you. Today, we have Maria Francisca Kelly as our main speaker. Uh, she's a teacher of English with more than 10 years of experience with different age groups. She holds a master's in applied linguistics and has been an educational consultant for public and private schools. She's also been an external collaborator for the Ministry of Education here in Chile. And more importantly, she's the founder and director of Bukio Education, being author of 22 books for children. So, uh, hello, my uh, Francisca. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Hello, David, thank you. Great. So right before we start, I would like to give you a few reminders to everyone that's joining today. If you're watching directly from our website, make sure you answer the evaluation sheet on the top right corner. And it will be much of help to us because we get and gather that information to improve our webinars. And also we will answer all the questions by the end of the session. So please write them down on your chat box and Francisca will reply to them once the workshop is finished, all right? So Francisca, I let you the stage. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. I am so happy to be here again with all of you. Um, today is my second webinar with SAM Chile and Dayton University. And today's topic is learning English with music. What exactly are we going to talk about today? First, I'm going to just show a short introduction so you understand where all my ideas and um, my opinions come from. And then we're going to go right in to musical practices. We're going to see how to use music, how to use specific songs, how to use finger play songs and just rhythm to learn English. More on the second part of the webinar, we're going to see how we can plan uh, our, our lesson, our English lesson, including music, all right? And as David just said, by the end of the webinar, I'm going to be answering 
all the questions that you may have. So as I told you, what is um, what is Buku? Who am I? Very shortly, I'm just going to say I am an English teacher. I studied English pedagogy in Chile. Um, and I studied, at, I, am a, um, I have a master's degree in applied linguistics, which helped me so, so much to understand what children needed or need actually to read and to write and to learn another language. Um, as David also said, I worked as a teacher for preschool students, for primary education, for teenagers and for adults. And actually many of the strategies that I have used with young learners, I used also with adults and with teenagers. And um, normally students love it. Um, so let's, as I said, go right in to this great practice of using music for the English lesson. Why, you may ask, why should I include music in my English lesson? Well, let me just say, music can reduce anxiety and it normally happens that children are very anxious, right? And we can reduce anxiety. We can improve children's memory and our memory as well. And also it provides an energy boost. How many times hasn't it happened to you that maybe you're feeling a bit blue, maybe you're worried or a bit sad, and you listen to your favorite music, you hear that song that you love, and whoa, you feel much better already because it actually gives you an energy boost because of all the things that happen in our brain that is not today's topic, right? Um, also, using music for the English lesson is a great practice because songs repeat chunks of language, which is how the child's brain is supposed to learn, right? It's so much better if the child, the boy or the little girl, um, learns, I don't know, to say, I don't know, rather than actually getting the explanation that I is the person don't is the verb do and not together, and no then is the other verb, right? We don't do that when we want children to learn another language in a natural way. So music helps us teach English in a much more natural way. And before we begin with um, all the songs that I, that I want to share with you, there's one tip in this webinar. Include songs or music in all your lessons. What? In all my lessons? Are you serious? Yes, I am. Um, music will, be, will bring joy to your classroom, or if you have now a virtual classroom, it will also help you get children more motivated, getting them to move, because now there are so many teachers teaching online and having children just sitting very, very passively in front of the screen. We don't want that because children need to move. They need to dance. They need to play. So the more we get them to move on the other side of the screen, the better, okay? And um, just for you to be prepared, the, the way in which I organize this webinar is actually um, showing you how you can use different types of music or different songs and um, how to use them for the different purposes that you may have for your lesson, for the different objectives that you may have in your lesson, okay? Um, this is just a general um, background, if you want, of just in general, what can we do with music in our lessons? Okay, of course, when they are working, maybe very concentrated or on something, we could include it as just background music, right? So if they've been singing um, a song, for example, the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round, and they know it, well, you can just play it on the background and they will repeat the song, repeat the song. They will hear the song. Maybe if they are not singing, it doesn't really matter. They are actually listening to it again and listening to it again. And remember that repetition is the key element 
to learn a language. So the more we present English language, the more we play songs and we play music, the better. And actually, when they learn these songs, they will feel very motivated for you to play them again, right? It's like, really, again, boys and girls? Yes, Miss, again, please. Can you read that story again? Can you play that song again? Because when children learn something, they feel so good about themselves, their self-esteem increases so, so much that they really want to hear the song again because they know what comes next. They feel important, they feel powerful, they feel that they can learn, right? Um, playing instruments, if you can do that, that would be amazing. There are many schools that don't have instruments because normally they are very expensive, right? Musical instruments are very expensive. So you could do it with whatever you find, maybe wooden sticks and just or maybe hitting on, um, on a pan, right? Tap, tap, tap. Anything that you find that can help children find rhythm and produce rhythm, okay? And that leads us to the third box we have right here. Expressing rhythm can also be considered as using music. And we're going to see some amazing examples. Percussion or external elements. So we can um, maybe express rhythm with uh, just our hands, right? By clapping. or any type of percussion. External elements. What do you have, guys? Ah, I have this can right here, or I actually have these keys right here. Okay, let's do something with this. And you can invent, and children can invent many things, and we're going to see some inspiration also in this webinar. Of course, as I said before, movement, children moving is a very important part of your lesson, right? Why? Well, because children need to move. It's not sane for them to be sitting on a desk for a long period of time. It wasn't healthy for them in, in our normal traditional classroom. Now it's even worse with, um, with online teaching because apart from being um, sitting down, they are facing a screen, right? So please remember, let's keep our children moving, standing up, sitting down, doing challenges, not just sitting passively in front of the screen, all right? Also, we're going to see how we can include stories or tell stories using music. And of course, ways in which, in which we can um, practice the English language with music, songs, rhythm, etc. All right, let's begin. I'm going to have a, a drink of water just because I'm um, getting ready to sing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first part, I really wanted to show you for the different structures of the class or of your lesson, how we can include music to go through the different steps of the lesson. So when we say hello, I have three examples here. The first one, the hello trolala song. And this is just waving hello and going one, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, how are you? I like to be with you. And you, and you, and you. Tra la 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 And you can repeat, of course, as many times as you want. Did you see that as I was singing, I was saying, hello, hello, hello. I like to be with you. So whenever you have the chance of showing with your body language, with your facial expressions, what you're saying, the better, because children then will get two inputs. They will get language and body language, mimicry, movement, to understand what you're saying. It's a double input, okay? Second example, this example also has this, um, this connection with students in which you tell them that you are so happy to be here with them, okay? One, two, three. Hello, 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 hello. I am happy to be here and I'm happy to see you. Hello, hello. 
Hello, hello, hello. I am happy to be here and I'm happy to see you. And if we really want to have an amazing connection with our students, we include their names like this. Hello, 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 Felipe. I am happy to be here and I'm happy to see you. Hello, 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 Agustina. I am happy to be here and I'm happy to see you. Okay, when children hear their names being pronounced by the teacher, they will feel so happy so important and as they feel important they will be very motivated to participate in your lesson okay of course it happens that many schools ask us to be in front of maybe 40 students i have been in classroom in classrooms with 45 students and singing this song with 45 names actually turns it into a boring activity, right? So there we see, okay, maybe I'm going to say hello to these five students first. Maybe I will say hello um, in the middle of the lesson. I will sing another song mentioning another five little names, okay? And then you see, you are the teacher. You're the person who best knows your context, your lesson, and your students. So you see how to make this flexible and make it work, okay? Now, usually after saying hello, what usually happens in, in some English lessons is that you have then routines, right? For example, maybe talking about the weather, maybe talking about their feelings. How are you feeling, boys and girls? Um, maybe ah, many schools go and fill out the calendar, right? So they talk about the days of the week. What day is today? What month are we in? What season are we in? Oh, that's right. We started spring, etc., etc. For these routines, I have these ideas. So to talk about the weather, you can, instead of just asking, Okay, boys and girls, what's the weather like today? We can do it with a song. And it will be easier for them to learn these chunks of language, to learn this whole question instead of just repeating it, right? So there's an example for what's the weather like today. One, two, three. What's the weather like today? What's the weather like today? Today is sunny, today is sunny, today is a sunny day. What's the weather like today? What's the weather like today? Today is windy, today is windy, today is a windy day. The more ridiculous you do it, the funniest it is for children, right? So maybe when it's windy, just woo, get your hair and maybe fall down on the chair. Whatever is fun and ridiculous, you get a better engagement with students, all right? Um, something that my students, my kindergarten students used to do with this song is that when I said, what's the weather like today? They shouted, today! Okay, that was very energetic, but that's what they did. And they loved it, so of course I let them. Remember, being flexible is an amazing asset for teachers. So what's the weather like today? Today! What's the weather like today? Today! Okay, just let them. If they invent a part of the song, that's amazing. Um, the more we involve them and the more we make them laugh and have a good time, the more they will be engaged with you and, of course, with your lesson. Now, for people who like, for teachers, who like to ask about feelings, okay? How are you feeling today, boys and girls? We can use If the Monkey song, which goes like this. If the monkey's feeling happy, it has a happy face. If the monkey's feeling happy, it has a happy face. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 happy, happy face. If the monkey's feeling angry, it has an angry face. If the monkey's feeling angry, it has an angry face. Ha, 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 
angry, angry face. If the monkey's feeling sad, <laughs> it has a sad face. <laughs> If the monkey's feeling sad, it has a sad face. <laughs> sad, sad face. And of course, you can include the feelings you want. Sleepy, hungry, whatever um, children may say that day, okay? And after singing the song, maybe you can already ask them, okay, so how are you feeling today? They might remember some of the vocabulary that you, you used in the song. And if you do this periodically, like maybe, I don't know, every week, every couple of days a week, they will start getting this vocabulary without any translations, right? And without any explicit grammar explanation, just by singing and dancing and interacting. Now, Calendar, when we are in this routine context, if we have the calendar, instead of just repeating the days of the week, let's just sing a song, right? Like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, the days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, the days of the week. Start each day with a smile. May each day be very fun. So let's make each and every day a very, very special one. Monday, and you go again. If you are thinking now, oh, I wish I had the lyrics to this song. Like, where can I get them? I was going to tell you at the end, but you can just go to um, Buku Education's um, YouTube channel and there are my videos and then you will find the lyrics, okay? So you can just read the lyrics and then learn it and sing it with your students. What I used to do after we sang the Days of the Week song is actually ask students. Okay, so I had my calendar. I pointed at Monday and I would ask them with rhythm. Is today Monday? I would put a no face, right? Because if they know to distinguish, how to distinguish the days of the week, you don't do anything. For very, very, very young learners, maybe they don't know yet, and you just go, okay. And um, that could be, is today Monday? They would answer, no, it's not. Is today Tuesday? No, it's not. Is today Wednesday? No, it's not. Is today Thursday? Yes, it is. So this is not actually a song, but it is a way of using rhythm to teach structures of language, okay? So we have this question, is today Monday? We don't explain to them, hey, little boys and girls from pre-K, the verb goes in the beginning when we ask a question. We don't do that, right? We just ask the question in a very fun way so they listen to it over and over, they feel motivated to repeat it, they play with language, and then after many years, they will understand, huh, that's why I sang that song when I was a very young girl or a very young boy, right? And, um, um, and we can continue to the next, topic. So now we have telling stories with songs. Is this possible? Yes, it is. So I have three examples of how we can tell stories with songs, and I'm going to show them to you right now. The first example is called Where's Baby Hippo? And it's called just like that just because this is a book called Where's Baby Hippo, which has a lot of repetition of structures. And I'm going to show you how we can do that. So this is, just to give you context, um, the name of this book is Where is Baby Hippo? So there's Mother Hippo and Father Hippo and Baby Hippo and Baby Hippo gets lost and nobody can find them. So Mother Hippo and Baby Hippo ask all the animals if they have seen Baby Hippo, okay? That's the context. So we can just use this story and sing the structure we want children to learn. Ka, 
that is where is baby hippo i don't know let's ask the fish fish where is baby hippo i don't know let's ask the elephant elephant where is baby hippo i don't know let's ask the bird bird where is baby hippo i don't know this is just telling a story how about we sing the answer i don't know which is the structure that gets repeated over and over again right so we could do it like this cat where is baby hippo i don't know let's ask the fish fish where is baby hippo i don't know let's ask the elephant elephant where's baby hippo i don't know let's ask the bird bird where's baby hippo when you now have repeated it three times you can just for number four go like this with children <laughs> and they will automatically say i don't know they don't know what i don't know means yet they will get by you shrugging your shoulders ah probably is like i have no idea or maybe i don't know but you haven't explained it explicitly right you're just using language um in a natural way so they can get meaning all right so let's imagine okay this story is over there are of course many other uh repetition they ask more animals okay so i don't know structure is repeated a lot in this story and then afterwards maybe we stopped um um using this story and i could um ask children yes so boys and girls what day is today and they could answer in spanish i miss no sé hmm? Do, can you say that in english hmm, hmm, hmm. and i use the same tone that i used when i was expressing i don't know with the book and they will remember ah i don't know so you can use rhythm melodies or or um little rhythm well i said rhythm rhythm melodies or songs to um remind them of structures of language chunks of language which is going to be great for their um english learning okay another example is just telling a story sang okay so there was an old lady is a story which is also a song there's a uh, an illustration right there of the old lady swallowing a fly this song goes like this there was an old lady who swallowed a fly i don't know why she swallowed a fly perhaps she'll die Ow. there was an old lady who swallowed a spider that jiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her she swallowed the spider to catch the fly i don't know why she swallowed a fly perhaps she'll die there was an old lady who swallowed a bird a bird how absurd to swallow a bird she swallowed a bird she swallowed the bird to catch the spider she swallowed the spider to catch the fly i don't know why she swallowed a fly perhaps she'll die there was an old lady who swallowed a cat meow how about that she swallowed a cat she swallowed the cat to catch the bird she swallowed the bird to catch the spider she swallowed the spider to catch the fly i don't know why she swallowed a fly perhaps she'll die this poor lady swallows then a dog she swallows a cow and finally she swallows a horse okay um remember that you can get well you can find these all these songs and stories online just google it but if you want the lyrics and see how i used my um hands you can go to youtube's uh, book education's youtube channel okay and there's also this other one the green grass grows all around so there was a hole in the middle of the ground the prettiest hole that you ever did see and the green grass grows all around all around and the green grass grows all around and in this hole there was a tree the prettiest tree 
that you ever did see. The tree in the hole and the hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around, all around and the green grass grows all around and on this tree there was a branch, the prettiest branch that you ever did see. The branch in the tree and the tree in the hole and the hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around, all around and the green grass grows all around and on this branch there was a nest the prettiest nest that you ever did see. The nest and the branch and the branch and the tree and the tree in the hole and the hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around, all around and the green grass grows all around. And of course, in the nest, there was an egg and in the egg, there was a little bird. Okay, for the whole version, you can see it on um, the YouTube channel, all right? Let's move on. One activity, the use of songs that I really, really enjoy is finger play songs, okay? Okay, so here I have four examples that I'm going to show you, and then I have some other more that you can just look up later, and it's just me giving you out the titles that I enjoy a lot. So, um, open, shut them is one song that I just uploaded yesterday to social media and the, to the YouTube channel. So you can just find it there. But we could do something different with this song. We can include sounds, right? Many schools are teaching phonics and many schools are teaching how sounds sound different from the sounds we have in Spanish and how we could maybe differ the sound to sound which is very important in English because if you say um, if you say a word with z and actually you were supposed to say s, the meaning could change, right? So we could go like this: open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little z, z, z. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Now let's go with s, s, s. okay. I was last night I was thinking hmm maybe we could include for this song a B for z, 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 like a B so open shut them open shut them let's look at the B z, z, z. open shut them open shut them now let's see the snake so you can actually use the melody to invent whatever you want okay um, for families, learning about families, we could have uh, daddy, mommy, sister, brother, and baby, right? So, where is mommy? Where is mommy? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, friend? Very well, I thank you. Round away, round away. Where is daddy? Where is daddy? Here I am, here I am. How are you today? Very well, I thank you. Round away, round away. Where is sister? Where is sister? Here I am, here I am. And the same with brother and the little baby, right? And we could end. Where's the whole family? Where's the whole family? Here we are, here we are. How are you today? Very well, I thank you. Say goodbye, say goodbye. Mr. Green and Mr. Brown are one of my favorites. Mr. Green is right here, this thumb here. His name is Mr. Green. And this is Mr. Brown, all right? They are friends. They really love each other. They are friends. And Mr. Green is going to go into his house. So he's going to open the door, go in, and close the door. And Mr. Brown also is going to go home. So he's going to open the door, go in, close the door. Mr. Green really wanted to visit Mr. Brown. So he went up the hill and down the hill and up the hill and down the hill and up the hill and down the hill. He knocked on the door, knock, knock, knock. 
Knock, knock, knock. Ooh, but Mr. Brown was not home, so he went back. Up the hill and down the hill and up the hill and down the hill and up the hill and down the hill. He opened the door. Eh, he went in. Eh, he closed the door. Eh, and he waited there. Mr. Brown now wanted to visit Mr. Green, so he opened his door. Eh, he went out. Eh, he closed the door. Eh, and he went up the hill and down the hill and up the hill and down the hill and up the hill and down the hill. He knocked on the door, knock, knock, knock. But nobody was home. So he went back to his house and he went up the hill and down the hill and up the hill and down the hill and up the hill and down the hill. Down the hill. He opened the door, eh, he went in, eh, he closed the door eh, and waited there. The following day, both Mr. Green and Mr. Brown wanted to visit each other, so they both at the same time opened the door, eh, they went out, eh, they closed the doors, eh, and they went up the hill and down the hill and up the hill and down the hill and up the hill, and they met each other. Blah, 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 blah. Goodbye, Mr. Green. Goodbye, Mr. Brown. They went down the hill and up the hill and down the hill up the hill, they opened their doors, eh, they went in, eh, they closed their doors and said good night. So you see how you're also telling a story. You keep children maybe intrigued on what's going to happen. They will find it funny. Oh no, he wasn't home again, all right? Um, and of course, when you do this, maybe at first, you can ask them just to watch, but the idea is for them to also keep moving, okay? Be moving along with you. Five little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only four little ducks came back. <laughs> four little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only three little ducks came back. Three little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only two little ducks came back. Two little ducks went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 quack. And only one little duck came back. One little duck went out to play over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 quack. And no little ducks came back. So, mother duck said quack, quack. And five little ducks came back. Remember, we can include humor, right? We should include humor. Okay, there are many, many other finger play songs that are amazing. We don't have time to sing them all now. But here I have this list. The Itsy Bitsy Spider is the typical one. Um, if we challenge students, right? Okay, guys, let's sing the Itsy Bitsy Spider. The Itsy Bitsy Spider climbed up the water spout. Great. Now let's do it. Faster and faster and faster. Bitsy bitsy spider. All that challenge will have them woo motivated and engaged. Two little blackbirds. Amazing, amazing finger play song for opposites, right? Um, I'm not going to sing it because we don't have time. But you can find it on the YouTube channel, right? And on social media. I uploaded it yesterday, uh, a couple of days ago, I think. Um, Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed, all right? This song is amazing to act out. So choose students, okay, um, I don't know. Uh, okay, you, all right, Juan, great. You're going to be one little monkey. Who else wants to be a monkey? All right, you, okay, you can do it, Maria. All right, who else? And you can choose students. They can actually jumping, be jumping, okay? Jumping on the bed, on the bed, and then ask them to fall down, touch their heads. Ah, oh, one of them is the doctor, so the doctor can go like this. No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Mommy can actually go, I don't know, maybe she has a phone, he has a phone, put the phone, or just with their, with their hands. Mama call the doctor and have them acting, moving, jumping, dancing, not just sitting in front of the screen. Let's remember that. Um, days of the week, as I told you before, right? I go with the seven fingers, seven days of the week. The green grass, as I just sang a couple of minutes before. 
And now we're going to see how to specifically teach language structures with songs. Okay, so I have four examples here. The first one is sailing in my boat. So what I did was I drew a boat. I drew one moon. I drew two stars. I drew three birds and I drew four fish. So you can do it at home. Children can do it at home. And it's easy material that anybody can, um, can come up with, right? And for free, because you can do it. You don't have to buy it. So this one goes like this. Sailing in my boat, I see the moon. Sailing in my boat, I see the moon. I see one moon. Sailing in my boat. Sailing in my boat, I see two stars. Sailing in my boat, I see two stars. I see one moon, two stars. Sailing in my boat, sailing in my boat, three birds. And you can actually do it just like this with your students in front of the screen, right? Appearing from one side, then appearing from the other one. Use the zooming in and zooming out. Be funny. Be ridiculous, it doesn't really matter because we are teachers and we're supposed to engage students, okay? So, three birds sailing in my boat. I see three birds. I see one moon, two stars, three birds sailing in my boat. Sailing in my boat, I see four fish. Sailing in my boat, I see four fish. I see one moon, two stars, three birds, four fish. Sailing in my boat. And of course, you can get so much out of these, um, these uh, drawings that you did because you can count them. You can go back to the structures. What do you see? I see one moon. What do you see? I see two stars. One, two. Great. What do you see? I see one, two, three. Three birds. And what do you see? I see one, two, four fish, right? And remember, the more we can act out what we are saying, like, I see four fish, sorry, fish, the better, right? Because we're helping students with visuals, with our oral language, with our body movements, etc., etc. There's an animal. Okay, so I have flashcards. If you don't have flashcards at home, you can draw them or you can print them out if you have the chance of printing out. Um, but let's remember that this material, even though this wasn't done by me, it's not the most important. The most important is you as teachers. If you have an ugly drawing of an elephant, it doesn't really matter as long as you make them interact you are funny, you bring humor to your lesson, and you bring the energy to make them on the other side of the screen move and dance and follow you, okay? So um, the structure here would be, there's an animal with big, big ears. There's an animal with a long, long nose. What is it? What is it? It's an elephant, and then you can get up. It's an elephant, it's an elephant. It's an elephant, yes it is. It's an elephant, it's an elephant. It's an elephant, yes it is. I'm actually getting up my chair, going back down. This is what we have to do with students to motivate them, okay? I. Um, it's now springtime. In Santiago, it's a bit sunny today. I am very hot right now, but it doesn't really matter, right? 
our job is to connect with students. If you see them um, maybe not coming to class, if you see them not participating, it means that we have to make a connection. How do we make that connection? Maybe talking with them in little groups, getting them to come to class and then having a good time, okay? Um, ah, well, I, I missed the second one. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Stomp your feet, stand up, jump around, include movement, and please include getting up from the chair, okay? Have students leave the chair, stand up, do jumping jacks, maybe run around the table, bring something to show you, have them moving, moving, moving. And um, something that I used to do a lot for teaching structures to very young learners are the potato pals, okay? You can just find them online. Um, they have many different songs and stories that teach language structures, such as at school or in the morning. So here I have an example of at school. So it just goes like this with a lot of repetition. At school, at school, at school, at school, at school. At school, at school, at school, at school, at school. I say hello, I say hello, I write in my notebook. I paint pictures, I paint pictures, I read books. I sing and dance, I sing and dance, I etc, etc, etc. There are more, as you see. We were following this structure, so this little potato saying hello is the first one I sang. I say hello. The second one, I write in my notebook. The third one, I paint pictures, I paint pictures, I read books. And then at school, at school, at school, at school, at school. Will those children who have sung at school a thousand times ask themselves, uh, how do you say? Do you say in school, on school, for school? They will remember, ah, at school, right? I'm at school. Um, and this is how we teach structures without being explicit about grammar, all right? And then repeating, I say hello, I say hello, I sing and dance. So you don't, well, as I said before, you don't do it in an explicit way, in a natural way, just by being exposed to songs, singing, dancing, interacting. All right, if you need to include songs with whole body movement, which I totally recommend, of course, children need to be standing up. Even if you are teaching um, through the screen, they need to be moving. So please include them, okay? To have them, to get them moving, to have them motivated. Even if they've been um, through many, maybe online lessons and it's your turn, okay, you can start with body movement. They dance for a while and then it's going to be much easier for them to concentrate and focus on whatever you need to teach that is not um, with songs because their brain all, already had a break, right? So they can come back and concentrate much easily. And um, in a very in a very efficient way because they're going their brains are going to be more prepared for learning okay so um again all of these you can find online you can find them on on book education social media as well um the moving song is just like this this is the moving song this is the moving song let's ta -ta -ta. let's have a rest move along hands moving high hands moving low let's move our hands with the moving song maybe you can you want to turn around this is the moving song this is the moving song la 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 okay you can find the lyrics online you can find um me singing singing it correctly because now i forgot some words <laughs> Um, also on social media. Hokey Pokey, very famous one. We're gonna do the monkey. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Do the monkey. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Monkey, monkey. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. That's all right. Do the elephant. Do the elephant. 
do the elephant. That's all right. We're gonna jump to the front and back and you actually jump front and back. I'm, I'm very tired now, I'm not going to jump, but we should also be moving. If we move, if we dance, children are going to imitate us, okay? We need to do that. Um, the typical one, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, right? You can do it in a slow version, in a fast version. Children love to um, be challenged. So if you could include um, maybe three versions, right? very slow and very and then normal and then fast or extremely fast they will love it and the one i sang before there's an animal with big big ears there's an animal with a long long nose etc okay as i said before um it's very important that we see because we're not going to be including songs just because we want to include songs, right? We need to see what our daily objectives are as teachers of English or as teachers who are teaching in English. So um, here I have some examples of daily objectives that you may have. Students will be able to recognize sound and sound by either showing their bee or the snake. Maybe they drew a bee, they drew a snake and they can show it so you, they can actually recognize which sound they are hearing. Another example of an objective. Students will be able to say what kind of fruits they like using the structure, I like apples, I like grapes, I like pears, etc., etc. Students will be able to listen and enjoy a story, for example, Home Alone. Students will be able to read three sight words, for example, the and you. Students will be able to write to members of the family, mom and dad, on their invitations. I included these, these language objectives just to make sure that you are also writing objectives um, this way and thinking about daily objectives, okay? Of course, English teachers, we have sometimes um, objectives that are very long-term, right? Objectives for the entire semester, objectives for the unit, for the month, etc. But we need to know exactly what we want our students to do in our 30-minute lesson or 40 or 50 or whatever your lesson is. Um, and that's why these objectives are so, so um, specific, right? So when I say students will be able to read three sight words, I actually include the sight words. When I say students will be able to write to members of the family, I include what members of the family? They're going to be able to write mom and dad and where? What's the context? They're going to write it on some invitations, okay? So being specific about the objectives we want our students to achieve in our lesson is key for us to be efficient in the teaching and learning process, okay? So here I have a lesson plan, just as an example, um, of how we can include music in a normal lesson. So the objective is just as the previous webinar, I didn't even change it so we can have the same example. Objective, students will be able to identify, that's the verb, identify some parts of the body. As the verb I chose is identify, that means that my assessment of course has to do with identifying, right? So students touch the parts of the body that the teacher mentions. I'm not asking them to say the words. If they say them, that's great, that's amazing, but I'm only asking for them to identify them today, okay? And then when I have my objective ready and I know how I'm going to assess it, how, what activity I'm going to use to assess if my students have actually um, reached the objective, then I can just list my activities. So number one, I said, I, I, um, I wrote, okay, I'm going to have students imitate movement and words with rhythm. So we can start um, maybe like this, moving their shoulders, their arms, their hands or their fingers, like shoulders, 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 arms, 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 hands, 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 fingers, 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 shoulders, 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 arms, 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 hands, 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 
fingers, fingers, fingers. So it's not actually a song, it's just rhythm, which makes it easier to follow, to repeat, and to remember. Then I'm going to have them sing and dance. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Da 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 da. Number three, I'm going to use a challenge. Children enjoy challenges, so I'm going to include it in my classroom. Okay, guys, I'm going to sing the the song again. You're going to close your eyes and move just as I mentioned those parts of the body. Let's start. Head, shoulders. Ah, you went to the knees. I haven't said knees yet. So they get to practice. Ah, knees is going down to my rodillas in Spanish, okay? Um, and you have them practice, practice, practice in fun, entertaining ways. Then, okay, boys and girls, you see how they have been moving and being challenged. So they are ready to come back and do some work quietly sitting down and concentrating on me. So for number four, my activity is, okay, children, now you're going to listen to this story. This story is called A Blue Idea. And it's about this boy, Eddie, and many things that happen to his parts of the body. Let's see. So when you hear parts of the body, you move them. If I say hand, you move your hand. If I say head, you move your head. Very good. Let's start. Ta 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 blah 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 blah. Now my hair is blue and my eyes are blue. Hair, arms. Now my my mouth is blue. Move your mouth. So you have them as active listeners. They are not just sitting in front of a video listening to a story. They are not just sitting in front of the video watching someone else dance. You, um, the best thing is to, to, to get this interaction with students, okay? So you're going to listen to a story, yes. Are you going to be passive listener just sitting there? No, you get something to do, you have a task. In this case, be alert of what parts of the body the teacher is going to mention so you move it and you keep them engaged with the story as well. Okay, guys, they were sitting for a while. I can have them move again. So let's do number five. Let's go into sing and dance again. Now, challenge again. We're going to do a slow and a fast version of head, shoulders, knees and toes or maybe even invent a song with shoulders, arms, hands and fingers, hands and fingers, whatever you want. Um, and then finally, I'm going to call out, okay, boys and girls, now I'm going to say a word, I'm going to say a part of the body, and you touch it as fast as you can. One, two, three, shoulders, and you see them act, react to what you say, and this activity helps you assess, observe, who is actually going fast and you're sure, okay, that boy or that girl learned. She's identifying or he's identifying his or her shoulders very fastly. But, oh, poor Juanito, I said shoulders and he went like this. No, shoulders. Ah, okay, so you know Juanito needs more practice. So it's a great way to assess, okay, I'm going to take the temperature of the lesson. Do they need more practice? Are we okay? Maybe there's only a couple of students who need more practice. Okay, I'm going to maybe include another activity next class. And this helps you with your future um, plan, lesson planning, okay? All right. It's time to answer questions. I am sorry that I took two more minutes than I was supposed to, but um, I hope that's fine. I hope it's it's okay with you. And if there are any questions, David, I can answer them now. Yes. Hey, again. <laughs> Uh, okay, so if you have any questions, please, you can um, write them down now in the chat box so we can answer them. 
So I have a question here. Uh, I know that the, uh, the topic of the webinar was not exactly directed towards teenagers, but would you give any advice for working with songs uh, with teenagers? For sure, yes. Um, actually, working with music is great for everybody, for preschoolers, for um, children, for teenagers, and for adults. So um, for teenagers, it's, it's actually very motivating because you can include um, music from the artists that they love, from the singers that they really love. And that's a great way of having them motivated and engaged with your lesson. So if they really enjoy, I remember my eighth grade students, they loved Justin Bieber when I was working um, at a school. So of course I included Justin Bieber a lot and it's amazing. It's an amazing idea. So yes, totally recommend it. Mm -hmm. Great, excellent. Any other questions? Please, Francisca is eager to answer all of your questions. And thank you, Sebastian, for your comment. I'm, I'm sure Francisca is very glad that she, uh, Sebastian says that this one's the best webinar that I have attended so far. So. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Any other questions? You're great. Well, I, I, I more, more than questions, I see Francisca, a lot of positive comments. Uh, and, oh, okay. So here's a question. Uh, uh, he says, today, one of my first grade students was having family troubles uh, while in our Zoom class. Any piece of advice for that? Oh, yes, connection. So if you could carve in time to talk to him or her um, for a couple of minutes, just a long time, right? So asking her or him or her, um, how are you feeling? Are you okay? And having that student learn that you care and that you are very interested in how they are, it will make them feel so much better. So it's for sure connection time, just to spend time with them and, and asking them how they are, it's, it's um, I think, the best advice. Great. We have another question, Francisca, from Miss Daniela Q. My second graders feel like they're too cool for these songs. <laughs> Any advice? Yes, that usually happens, right? They, they go, I Miss, this is for babies, right? Um, so what I used to do, because I also tried to include songs like this with my second graders, um, was to, to have a mix of songs like this and also songs maybe that um, were, were trendy and they would love that. Ah, so Taylor Swift, we can sing Taylor Swift. Okay, I remember using Taylor Swift. So um, let's look for songs that maybe are trendy, they will feel so cool because they get the same um, songs that their teenage sisters or brothers are learning with. And But of course, we have to be very careful on, on what songs we, we choose and also what parts of the song we're going to take advantage of, right? So if there's a song, very complicated song, um, pop song, that has maybe the, a structure that says, I don't know, where are you? I don't know, things like this, we can use it for sure. Great, thank you. We have three more questions, I think. Okay. First, we have, um, yeah, Liliana Caro says, uh, how can we manage these type of activities in a remote class? Well, I think you sort of did this right now, uh, but uh, I think there is an, um, I mean, I, I would, I would, I would assume that this is asked in in regards not to how how you do it, but how your student responds, like from the other, you know, with their camera, right? Uh, okay. Um, yes. So as as I said before, 
um, interaction and children actually doing something on the other side of the screen is so, so important for their learning that we have to ask them to be with their cameras on, for example, so we see that they are engaged. Or if we see that they go and start maybe feeling a bit boring, okay, we, we need to change. We need to get more interactive. We need to maybe switch the activity and let's get dancing and let's get singing. Um, so having their cameras on is very important for connection. Um, asking them to move, to dance, to feel challenged, to go get their favorite toy or to go get their favorite t-shirt. Um, things that have meaning and things that make them keep moving. Um, it's, I think, the best yeah. tip to keep yeah. them engaged and keep them learning. So I'll try to uh, fuse two questions because I think they are sort of, well, kind of similar. One from Miss Mariela says, what would you do with a student that is too shy and does not want to sing or dance? Oh, I love that question. Okay. Yeah. And then there was another one. Uh, any suggestions for students uh, with SEN students in an online session with special needs students? Okay. So, All yeah, right. So sort of for the first for the first question, what do you do with children who are very shy? OK, I love that this question came up because um, I thought many years ago, I thought um, of something and I realized that that was not correct. So I learned from um, teachers of music that have studied um, the development of the children's brain with music and they have taught me that whenever you expose children to dance and to sing we cannot make them dance and sing why if they feel shy it's very probable that they are not prepared to do it because they don't feel safe they don't have the self-esteem maybe so we have to let them um, now, what does this mean? This means that maybe they will be just looking at the screen, right? Or if we are together in the, in the classroom, they will be looking how everybody is dancing and they still will be exposed to the language. They still will be having a good time, maybe by laughing or, or um, looking at how ridiculous the teacher is, is moving and it's still a great input for those children, even if they are not moving. If we ask them and we make them, no, you have to dance. No, you have to move like this. They will feel so stressed because it's something that they really don't want to do because they are shy that we will block their learning. So it's very important that if they really don't want to, we don't make them. And if a lot of students really don't want to and only some want to. OK, let's work with those. Maybe with time, the most probable thing is that if we do this over and over, more children will join us because they will get used to this um, idea, right, of this style lesson, styles of the lesson. Great. I, I'll pick one more question. This one is from Andrea Paz Cuevas Valenzuela, and she asks, I work a lot with videos where we dance and sing, do you recommend to learn the song by heart or just work with video? Is it the same result? How would you? It's, no, uh, well, it, is, the, is the video, can we ask her? Is the video um, <laughs> yeah. recorded by her or is it an external video? Nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, yeah. Um, I'm going to give the from the from the worst to the best the the video or the music that less engages with your students is just an external video that you find online. OK, yeah. then it's better if they see their teachers and they recognize their teachers on their videos. That's better. They have a, a, a further connection to the video. But if they have a live interaction the teacher is actually on the other side laughing or telling them, yeah, that's fine, or no, let's do it again, or, or doing ridiculous things and um, seeing how the children give feedback and maybe um, following what the feeling is in the lesson, that's the best, okay? Yeah. So if you have to choose, if you are lucky enough and you can choose, um, interact with students much better than the the video that you sent home great one last question because i think it's pretty interesting maria pasa vendaño asks 
Any idea to answer the typical question, Miss, ¿cuánto falta para que se acabe la clase? Um, yes. The sad thing is that if children are asking that, it's probable that they are not having a lot of fun, right? So um, we can just answer, okay, it's, it's ten, only 10 minutes, guys, or um, it's half an hour. So we can answer with the, with the truth, right? Um, but when we get this question, let's go back to see, okay, why are they asking this? Is, it, is the activity maybe a bit boring? Is the activity maybe too difficult for them or too easy for them? And so they don't feel motivated. We have to um, try to be in a connection the entire time with our students so we can make decisions during the lesson to keep them motivated. Great, great. So I think uh, we have answered most of the questions here. If, if there were Daddy? any, yes. I would like, because I forgot to say something. Um, sure. Many of the resources that I used are these. So I mentioned Potato Pals that, um, remember, for uh, teaching yes. and learning structures, you can find it online. Super simple songs have amazing songs, and I use many of them. Book Education, of course, the YouTube channel, and, and one, a couple of songs that I have invented. And The Wiggles is also amazing, and I really enjoy it. Great. Great. So, uh, apart from that, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to email Francisca or us uh, in regards to uh, to this workshop or any other uh, doubts or questions that you may have. Okay. So, one last thing, please, if you are on the website for uh, University of Dayton in Chile, Please answer the evaluation sheet so that we can get feedback from you and from this session. All right. That's on the top right corner, right next to the ME for Menti. All right. So thank you, Francisca, for your superb workshop. I am sure that everyone is thrilled and filled with ideas to apply in their in their online lessons and And that's it for today. So thank you everyone for thank you being so here much. Today. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you everybody for watching. See you soon. See you next time. Bye.